Hello there, my radar tropical weather expert, Dr. David Erglicki, and on today's episode, we're gonna be taking a look at funny-shaped eye walls and hurricanes. But before we begin, if you aren't watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button, be sure to give us a thumbs up, you know it really helps the channel out. So the first thing we're going to be taking a look at here is geostationary satellite image of a hurricane from the past, Hurricane Isabel from 2003. And what we're going to be focusing in on here is right in the eye of the storm. So if we focus, and Isabel is looking like a beautiful storm, and I believe it was Category 4 at this time, you're going to notice one, two, three, four, five different swirls, mini swirls in there, and these are known as mesovortices. The fancy word for this is a polygonal eye wall, and we just break that down as a polygon. So this could be an ellipse, a triangle, a square, and this one in particular is a pentagon with five different points on it. So that's what we're gonna be talking today. What happens and why does this form? So you don't need geostationary satellite imagery, you can actually see this in radar imagery. So what we're taking a look at here is Hurricane Dolly from 2008, and this is imagery from the Brownsville, Texas radar. And if you look really closely, you can see one, two, three, four. So in this particular case on Hurricane Dolly, we have essentially a square shape with four distinct mesovortices. And now on radar, to see these on radar, you're looking for local maxima right here in radar imagery. And that's how observers use radar imagery to see these mesovortices. And this is not basin specific. This can happen on any basin in the entire world. And this right here are radar observations from Typhoon Herb in 1996 in the Western Pacific. And in, for this particular shape, you know, it's not a square, it's not a triangle, but what we have is an ellipse. And if you look, especially here at 1902 UTC, you can see you have a major axis and a minor axis of this ellipse. So these polygonal eye walls come in many different shapes and sizes. So I told you that polygonal eye walls are caused by mesovortices, but where do these mesovortices come from? And the answer is something called vortex Rosby waves. Now, I know it's a mouthful, and in this context, vortex just means a hurricane, but the Rosby wave is something else we have to talk about in the context of a broader atmospheric phenomena. And Rosby waves are something that you probably have dealt with in your day-to-day uh, -day or week-to-week -week weather lives, when there's a high pressure or low pressure. So to demonstrate this, we're gonna take a look at the Southern Hemisphere, the geopotential height anomalies at 500 millibars over Antarctica. And if we trace this, we can see a low, and then a high, and then a low, and then a high, and then a low, and then a high, and then a low, high, low, high. And the way we talk about this is we have five pairs here. And the way, and the way we would explain this is we call this azimuthal, by azimuth we mean going all the way around the circle, azimuthal wave number five, because there are five pairs of lows and highs. So the part of the reason why I chose the Southern Hemisphere over the Northern Hemisphere is that in the Southern Hemisphere, Antarctica is surrounded mainly by water. And that doesn't mess up the Rossi waves. You actually get more of a pure uh, dynamic response. Where you're in the Northern Hemisphere, you have these things called, you know, mountains. And that actually plays a big role in messing up the Rossi wave structure. So I just did this as a simplification to show you that we have pairs of highs and lows. We're gonna talk about a Rossi wave and why it happens. I'm actually going to take the Earth here and explain to you what's going on. Now, why Rossi waves happen is because the Earth is rotating. And despite what I guess some people will tell you, because the Earth is a sphere, the what is known as the Coriolis force, which is the spin imparted on the flow by the rotating Earth, changes with latitude. So at the equator here, the Coriolis force is actually zero, whereas it is a maximum at the North Pole. So we gotta talk about some really cool parts of meteorology here, and it has, it's something called vorticity. 
Now what vorticity is, is just a measure of the rotation of the wind. So really all this matters is that when in the northern hemisphere, when it's rotating counterclockwise, this is a low pressure. When it's rotating clockwise, this is a high pressure system. And what we take advantage of to explain Rossi waves is something called conservation of vorticity. So all the way over there, I told you that the vorticity from the Earth increases as you go towards the North Pole. So the total vorticity is a combination of the Earth vorticity and the relative vorticity. And we'll talk about that relative, relative vorticity in just a second. So say we just have here this flat line. And this is some value of Earth vorticity. Let's call it, I don't know, seven. Now what happens if there's a perturbation or if, this, if the flow gets jiggled? Well, we're gonna get a wave out of this. We're gonna come up here, we're gonna come down here, we're gonna go back up. Now, because of this equation where it says, so the total vorticity is the same. So if Earth changes, the relative vorticity has to compensate. All that really means is that if you go north of this line towards the pole, your Earth vorticity is going up. That means your relative vorticity has to go down. So we may have negative vorticity over here. So we're actually gonna get a high pressure system on the northern side of this line. Now the same thing applies. This line has been pushed to the south. The earth vorticity goes down. That means we have to compensate with a low pressure, positive vorticity. So we have a low pressure system. And then the same, we go above the line. This is a high pressure system. So this is a Rossby wave. It is a series of highs and lows. And you see this in weather patterns all the time. You'll have hot weather, you'll have storms, you'll have cool weather. You'll have hot weather, you'll have storms, you'll have cool weather. This is a Rossby wave. But this is what makes these so unique and why it's relevant for hurricanes. So if you make these, these circulations bigger, you get circulations all the way around these storms that look like this. Now what is cool about a Rossby wave is that it's what's called self-invection. I know, another big word. But what happens here is that on the western side of the low, it's pulling down air. So it's basically forcing everything in a backwards direction. And this is what really makes a Rossby wave. We call this retrograding or retrogression. And all that means is that even though the flow in the northern hemisphere is moving that way, the actual wave is moving in the opposite direction. If you ever think it feels something like a death ridge where it's you know 100 degrees for like three or four days, it's usually this. It's usually the Rossi wave has gotten so large it gets stuck and doesn't move. So in meteorology, we usually name waves after one, one of two ways: after the restoring force, what is actually you know causes the wave to oscillate, or the person who discovered them or mathematically came up with them. And the person who found this was someone named Carl Gustav Rossby, and to this day we call them Rossby waves. If you want the actual technical term, this is probably more like a potential vorticity wave. Um, potential vorticity is a talk, is a way different talk. We'll save that for a much different time. So okay, you're an expert on Rossi waves right now. Why does this matter for hurricanes? Well, remember how I said that the planetary vorticity gradient increases as you go towards the pole? In hurricanes, it's a little different. So when we talk about total, vort total vorticity in a hurricane, we have total equals the hurricane, the actual swirling the, of the average wind, plus the relative. So the hurricane here has replaced the planet in our previous explanation. And there's a second wrinkle. So in the eye wall, or I should say right inside the eye wall, we have three different kinds of vorticity, or three different magnitudes of vorticity. So in the eye, we have low vorticity. In the eye wall, we have a lot of vorticity. But beyond the eye wall, there is less vorticity. So what happens here is that it's not just increasing in one direction. It's actually increasing with radius and then decreasing. And this has a very interesting implication for the two Rossi waves. And that's what forms these mesovortices. It's actually two Rossi waves that interact with each other and what we call phase locking. But what they do is they interact with each other, they amplify each other, and they eventually break into mesovortices. So to draw this out, since vorticity is increasing, what you get here is you actually have the minus over here. This is your high, this is your low, and this is your low. And if you draw out these arrows, 
you'll see that this Rossi wave is actually going in a different direction. It is actually going this way. So it is going counter the flow of the hurricane. So the hurricane is swirling like this. This one's going in the opposite direction. But on the inner edge of the eye wall, you actually have the low here, the high here, and the low here. So the high swirls that way, the low swirls that way, the low swirls that way. So what happens if we fill in these other pieces of the flow, you'll see that this one actually goes in the opposite direction, is that this air is actually being evicted into the eye wall and that you're pulling the high in this direction this one comes out and you're pulling the low in this direction. So this is what's going on is that you have two what we call Rosby edge waves, vortex Rosby edge waves that move in opposite directions. They get to a point where they match up, they phase lock, they break and they become mesovortices. And is this reason it is due to this change in vorticity with radius. This is the core reason why you get mesovortices and polygonal eye walls. So you can actually model this. This was actually done in 1999 by a man named Professor Wayne Schubert and a bunch of co-authors. And so he basically created this in cylindrical coordinates in a much more simplified model. And based on his settings of how big the eye wall is, how intense it is, where you have low values of vorticity in the center, here's your eye wall, and here's the outer portions of the hurricane, or in his part, his vortex, this actually eventually breaks down into a wave number four. Now this model is a simple it's a very simple model, but he was able to show that simply due to this change from low to high to low, this is the reason you get these mesovortices in a very simple model. So from observations, from modeling, vortex Rossby waves. Now I told you when we were talking about the Riglicky Kane video, how the hurricane's outflow pushing out against the environment is not too dissimilar from the solar wind from the sun. As the sun throws out its solar wind, it creates a bubble in the interstellar medium. Well, we have another extraterrestrial example of these vortex Rossi waves interacting. And what we're gonna take a look at here is the hexagon, the large storm that sits on the top of Saturn, on the North Pole of Saturn, observed by the Cassini-Huygens observation vehicle. So what you're looking at here is a hexagon that sits on the North Pole of Saturn. And if we trace it out, Here's your hexagon. Now this was actually studied rather intensely for a few years and reading the papers on this, a lot of the scientists couldn't figure it out until one of the scientists did a simple model, much like I showed you before, and slowed down and dropped the vorticity in the core of this storm. There's a giant vortex here at the top of Saturn. And when he did that, when he slowed down this vortex, that's when the hexagon appeared. So they were able to prove both in observations and in model simulations that this hexagon is due to the same instability, the vortex Rossby edge waves, that we see the inner eye wall of a hurricane. Now, if you're wondering why can it maintain this, well, that has to do with heating, internal heating on Saturn. That's a different talk. So I hope by now you're an expert on vortex Rossby waves. So the reason we have polygonal eye walls like this in Hurricane Isabel is due to these vortex rising waves. It is actually due to the change in vorticity, background vorticity of a hurricane. Low in the eye, high in the eye wall, and then low again outside the eye wall. And due to this change in what's called the gradient, you get one Rossby wave going one way, one going the other way, and if you get it just right, they'll do what's called a phase locking, wrap up on each other, and they'll break down to form individual mesovortices. So I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you learned a lot. Until next time. Follow My Radar on social media. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download My Radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, Xbox, and Windows.